Thank you, Chairman. I represent my children, Colby and Campbell. Uh, and your I, position on the bill? My position on the bill, 3414, I reluctantly will support, and the other two I support. Okay, go ahead. Okay, the handout that I'm giving uh, is the Attorney General uh, Ken Paxton's opinion dated February 22nd, 2019. Uh, for brevity, I've, I'm just going to read two parts. On page five, uh, at the bottom, it says, Courts presume that fit parents act in the best interest of their children. More importantly, historically, it has recognized that natural bonds of affection lead parents to act in the best interest of their children. And I'll elaborate by saying natural bonds are only solidified by the time spent between parents and children. Now, if you skip to the last page that I marked for y'all, the last paragraph says, in evaluating parent-child relationships before, before making decisions about access to the child, courts presume that fit parents act in the best interests of their children and refrain, which they seldom do, from imposing their own judgments in lieu of a fit parent's decisions regarding what is best interest of the child. Now, as I said, courts are skipping the, the critical step and what they're currently jumping to is the best interest of the child factors that are also outlined on page five. And they're going, and they're, what they're skipping is the determination of a parent being unfit. Now, according to the Attorney General's opinion, unless there is a compelling state interest of which we are currently unaware, equal shared parenting should already be a presumption. Now, coupling this bill with the Attorney General's opinion will bring constitutionality to the Texas Family Code and clarity to the family law industry. Okay, sir, well, your time's up, but we sure appreciate you being well, here. Well, thank anyone... you, and please vote thank for this for bill. The, thank, thank you, you for that. That's interesting. Uh, hang on, does anybody have any questions? Thank you, sir.